Flory Models, I'm Philip Flory. This particular build we'll be doing is the new Academy 148 scale F4B Phantom in the fabulous Sundowners colours, which as you know, probably a big fan. Uh, anything with a shark's mouth, and obviously these colours are amazing. Now, we're going to be building it pretty much straight out of the box, apart from what we're going to try and do is fit the Hasegawa uh, 148 scale F4B zoom set to this. Now this is made by Edard, and basically it's a colour photo etch set. What this enables us to do is detail up the cockpit a little bit more. Now, just because it says for a Phantom doesn't mean it's going to fit, and I've already done some measurements and it doesn't quite fit properly. There's a few little bits, but certainly the side panels will fit no problem at all. The pilot's one does, it's just the Rio station, the guy in the back, it doesn't line up particularly well. But I think with a little bit of alterations, bit of modifications, it will work. Hopefully the guys at Eddard will be out with a full colour full color set for this particular one very, very soon. But I think really for the sort of about seven pounds, uh, about 10 bucks, it's a great way of upgrading your model on a budget, no problem at all. The other thing we're gonna do with this one, is we're going to put it in an in-flight display. So we're going to have this one gear up, looking like it's ready for business, looking very menacing on a stand, which we'll talk about later on in the build. So anyway, let's get on and get on with the cockpit. Okay, so we're looking really at how it's going to fit. So we've got some little calipers here, so we can measure distances between the actual cockpit parts we've got here and the actual photo etch pieces. So we can see what's going to fit, what's not, even if it's going to work. Okay, now, as I say, I've done a little bit of measuring before, but I'll show you exactly what we've done. So what we've got down here, we've got these ones, which is the main instrument panel. So all we're going to do is just going to take a measurement from side to side. Now, we know it's going to drop inside here, so we just make sure we've got the right cockpit we're going on with. So we want uh, L4, which is the one on this side. So we're just going to come along, and we know the calipers fit inside, so that main one will be absolutely fine. Okay, so we've got the side pieces to go on to L29 on this one. So we know it's this bit just down here. We do it from the widest part. Okay, and it's a little fraction wider than we've got on this side. Now this isn't a problem so much because we can trim edge, push in slightly to get a nice fit. So we know the pilot's one's fine. Now the problem we've got is this one back here on L5 station because we know if we do it the other way we measure the outer part of this particular one, okay, and then we come along to the actual main part itself, it's about one and a half millimeters too big. Options, don't use it, that particular one, and we're actually free paint it, or we trim and cut in. Now looking at the detail on this one, it seems to be slightly different to how it's laid out here. So best thing to do, go and check your references and find out which one is correct. Is it the actual molding on the plastic, or is it the one in here? That way you can make a decision. You can say, right, okay, well, the photo H1 is correct, which I'm more inclined to think is right, than this one. So we can actually use the detail here with the instruments all in one line versus on here where they're slightly stepped. You've sort of got two, then three, then a four. So, and work your way around it. The side panels we looked at, to be honest, they do fit absolutely fine, and they're exact match for the ones for the kit, which are on this little guy down here. These are going to fit just down on here, and as you can see, fit perfectly into these recesses, so they're absolutely fine, no problems at all with those going on. So it's literally just this rear instrument panel on this one here. There's lots of various uh, lumps, bumps, nozzles, and things like that. They're all a little bit bigger than the kit part. Don't forget, this kit isn't designed for it. This update set isn't designed for this kit in any way. It's not scaled to it, it's not measured to it. And obviously, you would think that being it's just an F4B, and if it's correct, it will be different. Unfortunately, we all know different kits, different manufacturers, slightly different versions between them all. Whichever one is correct, very difficult to know. I'm not a rivet counter, and I'm no way gonna start going around measuring the real thing to find out which one is correct to make it that way. I will do whichever one fits best, looks better as we work our way actually through it. But having a look, quick check, I know for really, as you say, seven pound, which I paid for this particular set, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna give us exactly what I'm looking for, which is when we look in the cockpit, it gives us that look of beautifully painted work, even though I haven't done any of it whatsoever. So that's the first thing. So that covers that little bit. So what we can actually do now is basically start getting all the parts cut out, bring them in, sand them up, clean them up, get rid of all the sprue pegs, everything else like that, and start assembly on the cockpit before we get going with the painting. Okay, right, we've moved on uh, just a bit. What I've actually done, we've put the wheel well in here. Pretty straightforward, four sides. Just make sure you've got the arrows pointing downwards. Um, when you put it in, it fits in. 
You might be saying, why are you bothering with wheel wells, stuff like that. It's a structural part of the kit. What happens is it's going to be the bottom of the underside here and then it'll push up into the bottom. So it's all very structural and obviously I want to show you guys as well. No problem really, ejector pin marks, there's some very, very small faint ones in there. If you're going to be hyper detailing it, you know, you might want to sand those out. Generally, if you're not, if you're just going to give it a normal plain wash in there, you'll be absolutely fine. You don't need those. So as I'm doing these, I'm just sort of taking care of parts that are going to need a little bit of time to dry. So obviously you can push through quite quickly. So the other one here, we've got the main gear well. Now this is a little fiddly, if I'm honest. So actually what you've got, um, I've learned the hard way doing that end. What you want to do is just pop along, look at your instructions and cut one out at a time. Then you'll have the correct bits. If you're like me, cut everything out put them down and then you, you know, clean them up, take care of the tabs, you end up all the parts and you're like, oh, hold on, which is left, right and everything. It's all right now, I've got one done and I've got one as reference. It's just at the time when you're doing it, you tend to think like, you know, oh God, what have I done here? So what you tend to do, have this one here I use as a reference, use this little one with the stipply back bits on there first because it's got nice, strong locating tabs. So actually what, what you can do, you can just come along, pop a little bit of glue here. So the toothy one goes in and it will lock in and hold here quite tight. So just give it a rub up and down so it bites. Okay, and that one's in. If you do it the other end like I did here, it makes it really, really floppy. It doesn't like to hold. So there we go, that's that one in. Then the next one you can put in is the mid one, the brace, okay. So it's got the heavy side in, and it's at a funny angle. They've got angles on them. For going in because obviously don't forget this is going to be the other side of this one so once that one's in like that what you can do is put a drop of glue down one side and then down the other all right and then you can come in and then sandwich this little lot together in fact I'm pretty sure we've got this round the wrong way let me just check stronger it goes to the front No, it's all right. So, okay, what we do is just come along, sit that in. There we have. Sorry, me getting a little bit confused. And it is one of those things, again, if it doesn't look right, it's because it's not right. Okay, there we go. So, this one sits in there very nicely on the end. Make sure you've got the correct height on these two little bits at this end, all right? Make sure they're all square running across, otherwise you can get loads of little trouble. Okay, so we're just gonna make sure these are all tucked in. And then this end, the one with the, the side which has got your ejector pins goes to the outside, so you don't have to worry about that. So a little bit of glue on the outsides. And as I say, as long as you've got the glue on the outside, it should just drop in, no problem at all. So there's our other little wheel well all done. So we've got both the the main wheel wells. Again, because you know we're not gonna have gear down, it's structural, it will hold the wing apart, all right? Now, the other thing, the reason for getting forward is to start on this business. Now, this is the intakes. Um, there are seamless ones available now if you wanna go down that route, um, but certainly from my point of view, I've got a little technique for doing seamless intakes. With the Phantom, they're quite odd because you can see down in there, but it is so dark that you don't have to worry about it too much. It's nice to have the um, the veins on the first stage compressor blades, the ones that are behind, the ones that direct the airflow, the ones that don't move. Um, you can see those from the end when you look down. And the nice thing about this kit versus obviously earlier kits, the Hasegawa one you know, I'm talking about, is that it's got nice deep, you can see down into these blades. And we have got the little veins, the deflection veins are gonna be on the front, which we're doing a nice bright silver. So when you look in that gloomy hole down there, you will see them. And obviously we're doing ours in flight, so we're not gonna have FOD covers and things like that. So the way I do it is making sure you've got your right intakes. So it's the chunk out of the top, goes to the bottom. Just make sure we've got the right ones around this way, again, it's the thing where you don't, when you have both off, you can't see, but there we go. It should go in quite nicely. Now, I didn't cut, I sanded, but we've got a little bit of overcut just down here. Once they're in like this, what you're gonna do is literally flood it with extra thin glue. You want it so it goes all the way through 
both sides. Okay, this is our stage one for making seamless intakes. But you've got to have enough glue in here, otherwise what happens is you'll have a weak join and then you can have all types of trouble. So what I tend to do, just do the outside ones like this, give them a bit of a squish, make sure all the glue's flowing if you want to. Some pegs, always handy. I'll actually put it to that edge, because you want it to really, really squish together. And make sure it's joined all the way around. So we just do the same on the other side. And then we'll just come back to that one. But it is important you've got enough glue in here. If you don't have enough glue, what will happen is that it will literally, you'll get a crack appear inside it. And this one, for some reason, doesn't sit. That's why. There's always a reason I've missed a tab. So we just sand this out. The reason I sand as well when you'll see me doing these tabs versus a knife is, if you go too far, you can just sand each side of it and it'll still come together. Yet if you use a knife, then it's, you know, and you over sand it, you have a real problem. So there we go. You can see you've got a little bit of a line running down there. But once we put the extra thin in there, it will bring it all together, it will weld it all up, and we won't have to worry about it. But again, making sure you go right the way in, lots and lots of glue, keep it nice and firm. Okay. So when we're done like this one, what we do is get our peg that stack. All we do, you can use a, lot, a longer brush if you want to, but you can come in like this, okay, and just make sure you brush glue on the inside, and to be honest, it's just about long enough to be able to reach both directions. So we're just gonna come in that way, and this side, and then what we want to do is leave these alone to totally set for a good few hours before we come in and do the next stage on these. All right, so that's that one, and we just glue the inside of this one. All the way down Over here. Right, there we go. That's those done. Because what we're going to do, we're going to come in in a moment with some filler, some of our own makeup of thinner. It's a little bit thicker. Put them in, okay, and then hopefully what will happen is we'll use a cotton bud, we'll use some very aggressive cellulose thinners, and we can literally melt it all together in there. That will give us our nice sort of seamless look so if you are looking down top and bottom you won't see them but looking in luckily as you look down there they are top and bottom as i say you probably won't need them too much anyway you could get away because it's quite flat on the bottom especially in with a skinny stick and get in there and sand it flat you might even just be okay and then get in there with a little bit of primer and everything else but i'll show you about doing the other way anyway so we just let them dry a minute and then we can get in and we can get some filler into those Okay, so now the actual uh, glue has dried on these intakes, what we need to do is fill them up. Now traditionally, sometimes I'll go along and I use liquid um, fillers, things like that, basically thin down one. So we've showed it before where we've used our own one. This is just a Squadron Green Putty cellulose thinners. Mix it up into a bit of a paste and then poke it in. Or what we're using now, we like the uh, Perfect Plastic Putty. This is Dux Materials. Great thing about it, it's water-based, so it's not chemically. So what we're gonna do now is just fill up these internals in here. So all we've got here, got a little bit on the edge, we're just gonna grab ourselves a, a little bit and we're just gonna run it in. And the great thing is I've got this little plastic guy here, which is the uh, filler tool, which is from uh, Guns, okay? So what you do, you wanna go slightly over the top, but we need to keep it quite smooth. All right, so as you're placing it in, we're just gonna use the tool's curved edge to give us a nice filled line. So we're coming from both sides. It's a bit tricky for you guys to see. Okay, but just go slightly more than you need. But using this curve on there, or if you haven't got it, just get a piece of plastic card, thin plastic card, and curve it a little bit. You can make very nice, smooth, edges as you go through. So we just come in with this one here. Okay, so we're just trying to warm it. What we want to do is get as rid as much useless excess as possible because what we don't want to do is make more work than is required. Okay. Yeah, that's the thing with this little tool. It's great at smoothing corners as it 
positions the filler down on there. Okay, we're just going to scrape out the areas we don't. So what you want to do is let that totally dry. Don't come back and touch it until it's totally gone off. When it's gone off, I can show you two little techniques to get rid of those and to tidy them up. So always clean off your tools straight after you've been using fillers and things. You'll notice they'll last a lot, lot longer. Right, a couple of things we've done, or you can do as things are drying. We've put together these uh, the little RAM uh, intake doors. These are the ones that get bigger and smaller to affect the amount of airflow going into the intake, especially at supersonic speeds. Two parts going together. There's eject pins all over them, but don't worry about it because they're all in the insides. So we've done that one. We've removed this top area at the top here. Being this is going to be the naval version, so it's going to have a cover over it. If it's the Air Force version, obviously that's a refueling probe going in. It's just a generic part. And then obviously we've cleaned up this tab at the end. We've gone along as well and we've just checked it all over to make sure that there's nothing that's going to affect the joint. So just run your fingers down and feel for things that little raised edges, things like that especially when you were doing on this section here. This is the belly section. So we've opened up all the holes that we're gonna need. So obviously we've got the four on each wing, okay, and the center line one as well. All right, and then what we've actually done, we've installed and glued in this little plate. Now this little plate here is what the actual intakes are gonna sit onto, okay? So it's important that's in there and glued in nice and firm as well. And what we're doing at the moment, these little box sections that we made up, we can then install these down into these um, actual ones as well. Now for our point of view, we're gonna be doing this gear up in flight pose, looking all very nice. But we need this box section in there because what happens is when you put the top of the wing section on, it's gonna act as a height and a strengthener for this top part as it goes on here. So obviously without it, if we just came along and we put this one on, what would happen is this just sinks down and there's nothing there at all to hold it into position. You might get away with it, but honestly, it's not worth it. Same as what we're doing with the uh, front gear well as well. So we can get all of those put into position and glued into the nice and firm. Okay, and then what we can do is come back in a moment and we'll clean out these intakes and we can look about painting them, fitting them in there, getting them all installed so we've got this section on and then we can just pop back and start work on the cockpit. Okay, so this has been drying now for the last sort of about an hour, hour and a half. Probably a little bit um, tacky still if you really push down. But one of the good things with this stuff that I quite like is it dries pretty quick. Compared with some of the other ones we use, the more traditional chemical-based uh, putties, they take a long time to cure, a little bit of shrinkage. This stuff's pretty good. If you haven't used it before, I do recommend it highly. Um, it's got minimal shrinkage. When we say shrinkage, especially on something like this, is quite noticeable. Um, if you put it down a panel line, and then leave it for a couple of days and over it, it sort of dips in and then before you know it, you've painted your model and you're all finished and it has got it. Now I know it's nothing particularly bad in here, but certainly it's something you don't really want. So what we can do is start to sand. The easiest way to start with, we just grab ourselves some skinny sticks. If we just grab us a new one, ideal for getting in here. This is just a medium pack, so obviously you've got quite a hefty grit on one side and then it's quite fine on the other. Now to start with, we are going to start on the fine side so we don't go overboard. But all we're doing now is obviously just sliding it in and out of the tube, getting off the most of it. Okay, and what we're trying to do is just take up all the high edges and everything else. But sort of let the sanding stick do the work. Don't go in there pushing it too much. When it loads up, quick... Pat your trousers, these are self-cleaning ones, so obviously it just cleans out totally like that. And then you can just go down. Now, you might find that you've got minimal amounts of filler and you've got it exactly where you want it. Okay, and you're absolutely fine. And you give it a few passes and it's not looking too bad down in here. Okay, but I would recommend coming along, we've got the various ones again, or here, and some of the others. So we've got the blue skinny sticks, which are more, more coarse, around about 220 grit these. But these again, great for getting it down into side intakes. Give them all a good sand, no problem at all. Okay, all the way through. Okay, and then looking down there, it doesn't look too bad. Then what we switch over, clean that as well. Again, these are all self-cleaning, all the entire floor remodel, sand and stick range, self-cleaning, which basically means you give a tap on your trousers, and as long as you haven't got any like we've got down here, wet bits of filler, but down there, all clean, you just go in and give them a rub out. Then obviously the finer you go, the dust coming out the other end is the clue. Obviously the nicer the seam. 
and then you just go through and just give them a little sand. And actually, we're not looking too bad down there. I know the camera will never probably pick it, but you can probably see it's not looking too bad down there at all. But a couple other things you can do. We've got these guys now, the new sanding sheets. So the great thing is with these, you can just cut yourself a whatever you like. So I'm just going to take a little strip off of here. Okay, you can pull one, attach it to something like a bit of a sponge. So I've just got mine up on the top like this. Okay, then you can insert it in there. And obviously we're a little bit thick at the end. But just trim it down again. Okay, what you can do is just pop it on just like this and you can then hold the bottom. So it should have cut a slight long bit, but if you hold it like this, you can just put it on one of these guys and it'll go through it and make rounded shapes. Okay, again, with all the stuff, it's all self cleaning. So you can just get in, give that a little bit of a rub around, do the face and in there from both sides. So just clean from this side as well. And I have to say, that's not bad at all. That's looking really good down there. The more traditional way, if you want to go down the chemicals without sanding it, get yourself something like this. Cellulose thinners, okay, or lacquer thinners, depending where you are in the world. All right, cotton bud or a Q-tip. And all we do, take it. Now this stuff takes about a few seconds to start to work. So all you're doing, you're popping it down inside. Okay, and you're just rubbing it around to start with until the filler starts to work. Now, because this is water-based, this is gonna take a little bit more to start to go than your traditional lacquer thinners. IPA works with this as well, if you want to, but they all will do the same thing and start to get in there. And it's doing it quite nicely up here. Excuse the planes. Okay, so as soon as it starts to drag and get a little bit draggy, Switch ends, make it nice and wet. Okay, we're just going to put it to the side now. And you can do it. What this will do, the plastic will physically melt as well. That's why you're feeling that draggy pulling feeling. Okay, so we're just, as you can see, we're just doing sort of up and down motions all in there. And make sure you get rid of all the excess filler because obviously we're I'm going to keep it all roughly the same size. Getting a bit draggy, I'm going to swap out, grab another cotton bud, and just come in there. What happens is the filler, as it melts, starts to take the plastic with it. Okay, and it all gets a little bit gooey and messy. And when it starts to get gooey and messy like this, you literally just leave it, okay, and goes out. But say this stuff. If you're using something like Mr. Surfacer, traditional, um, you know, lacquer-based putty, things like that, you will notice it's almost immediate. This takes a little bit more of a scrub, purely because, as I said, this is water-based, so it's, although it will eat through anything, this, because it's very aggressive, it does take its time to get going. And the other thing you do notice is if you're doing it with this, you will get little crumbly bits come off, where the others go nice and smooth, this is more crumbly. That said, I do like the way this works because it uh, comes up. But what you have to do is do what I'll show you in a moment, is to completely get it off. So I'm happy with how that is. That's a nice looking intake down in there. So looking in there, we can't actually see any proper gaps. Got a little bit too much just down there. Let's wipe that out. Let's say, let's see how much you can get down in there if we just drop this top can down a bit. You can probably see, we haven't actually got a seam line. You see that's the join down here as it runs down, but if you get near the back, you can't see it. You can't see the other side as well. So that makes our seamless intake. But you probably see in there, we have got bits of filler in there. So the plastic itself has gone quite soft, okay? And if you feel in there, you'll feel it. So what you want to do, take your sponges, preferably a skinny sponge, we can use more of a polishing type, so I've got about 8 million in here, but none of the ones you need. So if we just take one of these. OK, 
Okay, we're going to go for the polishing side. Okay, and just give it a rub and make sure you get at all the bits. Because otherwise, when you come along in a moment to put your primer down there, you're going to have problems because the bits will attach to everything. Okay, give it a wipe out. Make sure you're all happy. It's all clear. This side, then use the polishing side. Okay, so you're all happy, it's all clear. Let me just put that lid on. The next thing we want to do is actually put some primer down there. Now, I like to use this stuff. Now, this is uh, polyurethane, basically, it's like a rubber. Two things with it though, first of all, remember this stuff you can't sand it for about 72 hours. Okay, it's polyurethane, imagine it like latex. It goes down, it covers everything, it gives a beautiful finish to your work, no problem at all. But if you come to sand it immediately, it just peels. It does take a long time to dry. Something like this, it's ideal for it though. Um, years ago I was playing with different things and I used to use latex rubber to do intakes. I used to physically dip them, take them out drawback to it is it takes about a week for it to dry so if you're trying to get on with your modeling and everything else it's a real time consuming area so what we've got here can i just grab some kitchen roll because it gets a bit messy so we'll just pop this down so what we've got here i've already done it on the other one to show so we're just going to pop a little bit more in here neat straight into the the color cup Spray it out. Now, start with just air to make sure you've got no dusty bits in there at all, okay? And then all we're going to do is literally build up a couple of little light passes just to start with, okay? Just so what it's got now is something to grip to. Cut to air, just going to dry this out. Okay, now it's dry, what we can actually do is put in some quite hefty blows. And you want it almost running down there, so when we spray it like this, you can physically see it running. All right, and you might be able to see in here, you sort of get a little orange peel effect. As I don't have the light, but you can see, totally seamless now no problem at all. Now what you want to do is lay it flat, okay? That way it will all dry nicely and you should end up with, this is one I did about half an hour ago, something like this. So completely seamless, no problem at all and it'll save you about 20 quid buying a resin one. Okay, now what you want to do now, let that totally, totally dry and then all you're going to do is literally just spray it flat and white just in the inside to give you that colour. To be honest, it's a little bit grey but they do do this primer if you like in a white, you wouldn't even have to touch it at all. Spray it in white, do the first stage compressor blades, it's not the blades, actually they have like um, veins and it deflects the air because obviously if the air was to hit the blade flat on it doesn't work very well. So it's like little veins and they scoot. Now those ones on the first stage compressor blades don't physically move, okay? First stage obviously do, but the ones in front don't. I'm going to do them quite a bright silver, more silver than there would be in real life. Just purely so, as we said, if you look down in that intake, you can see something, it will reflect the light and it will make your intakes look so much better having to see something at the end. But as I say, we'll let those things dry, get them sprayed white, get the compressor blades, the first stage ones, which are these guys just down here, get them painted as well. We can get them on, we can get them installed into the wing section and then we can get on with the cockpit.